So, hello everybody and um, welcome to today's film talk on the documentary Mountain of Nothingness and also welcome to our Confucius Institute's sixth film festival. Um, this is the first time we're doing this online, so um, I think we're doing pretty good so far. There's always some technical challenges maybe, but I think it's going really well and um, it's really fun uh, to do this for the first time. Um, so we'll, we'll have uh, about maybe 45 minutes or a bit more time to talk with our three guests, um, the makers of the documentary Mountain of Nothingness. And um, if, you can, if you think of any questions that you would like to ask or also after the, uh, after the talk, if you have any questions, just write them in the Q&A section below. So it's also maybe called F&A in the German Zoom version. Um, and then in the end, I'll go through and, um, and, uh, answer or, and uh, pose those questions to our, our guests. Um, so first I'd like to introduce uh, the um, director of Mountain of Nothingness, Professor Dr. Wang Li Xin. Uh, yeah. in <laughs> um, she, she is the director uh, of the Institute of Culture and Creative Industries at Chongqing University and professor at Meishu Film Academy of Chongqing University. And her research field is film and TV criticism, semiotics, arts history, transnationalism, and Chongqing local culture studies. Happy to have you, Wang Laoshi. Yeah, uh, thank you for your introduce me, and I'm um, very uh, pleasure at her to meet everyone, and uh, I glad to share my film, uh, my documentary film to uh, to you. And if you have you any question, can uh, ask us, and uh, I'm very glad to know you face face back to us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and also, I'm uh, happy to introduce Mrs. Wang Jing, who is a lecturer at the School of Foreign Languages at Shandong University, uh, where she is currently in the midst of defending her doctoral thesis. Right? Are you done now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not done yet. You're in uh, the middle of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So good luck to that. I'm sure you'll do super well. Okay, I probably need uh, like two more months to you know, get a final result back. Okay. So, uh, yes, That's it's a very hard moment for me. Yeah, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> um, and I will. So uh, Wang Jing's uh, research field is uh, film theory, mass culture, and film education in China. And mm -hmm. she was, among other things, responsible for the English title and the subtitles of the, of the film Mountain of Nothingness. Um, and also, I'd like to introduce Mr. Gao, Zhi, Gao Zhibin. Uh, he's a lecturer at the School of Journalism and Communication uh, at Sichuan International Studies University. And his research focus is visual culture of new media and art history. And he wrote the script of uh, Mountain of Nothingness together with Wang Li Xin. And he is also the film's cinematographer. Welcome, Gao Zhibin. Yeah, he will he will just speak English, but um as we have Wang Jing here who is also perfect in translating, uh, it's easy for me because she'll probably handle most of that. So thanks for that. Um and then last but not least, I would just like to mention that we have a special guest in the audience today. Um, that is one of the film's art advisors, Professor Tim Bergfelder. He's a professor, at, uh, a professor of film at the University of Southampton in the UK. Um, so he's a, a guest here and he'll probably pose some questions um, as well um, that we're already very curious to hear. Um, so for those of us who just joined um, and maybe haven't the, the, seen the film, Mountain of Nothingness. Hopefully most of you just saw it. It, it was just on, um, started at 3 p.m. 
Um, but I will just quickly summarize the, the plot for you um, in the beginning. Um, also because um, the, I find the film is very, uh, is filmed very openly. It's, it just lets the uh, protagonists narrate the stories themselves. So um, I really uh, profited from watching it twice or three times to actually wrap my head around the, all the different plots because there are several plots interwoven in this, in this film. So the film, um, the, the, the Chinese title is Ye Shi Shan Ji, and that's a reference to the former village name of this village where it is set, uh, Hua Jia Sun because um, that village used to be called Yechi Xiang, which means wild ducks homeland. So very romantic name. Um, and the film toggles between scenes of daily rural life in the village of Hua Jia, Hua Jia Tsun, filled with mundane chatter about livestock and vegetables and da daily chores um, and so on. And then on the other hand, it talks about contracts, land rights, politics, um, and even allegations of corruption and so forth. So some very serious topics. Um, and every now and then we see scenes of these beautiful mountain images in the clouds um, combined with beautiful quiet music that just kind of feels like a bit of a break to all this chatter and all, everything that's going on um, in the movie. So as I said, there's different plots interwoven in this film and the longest and maybe the main plot is the plot about the land rights. Um, so this issue is a little bit complicated, so bear with me for one minute. So first, um, I'll probably mention that in China, uh, individuals cannot uh, privately owned land, but they have to obtain land use rights from the government for a number of years for a fee. Um, so the protagonist of the documentary is the farmer Wang Huiyuan, and he planned to build an old people's home combined with a cattle farm on the land that he leases, but the land is not registered for construction purposes, but only for forestry or for growing trees, growing fruit trees and so forth. Um, so in order to use this land for this purpose that he's intending, um, he's going to court. And uh, his, his own lawyer then, however, withdraws his case without consulting him before. So um, then some villagers suspect that the reason for this is maybe because the lawyer doesn't want to shed light on some shady things that are going on with the contracts of the land rights and a forestry rights certificate. And then another villager, um, so-called Ma Lin Kun, believes that the village chief maybe secretly signed a lease contract with Wang without consulting the village committee and then therefore believes that uh, the contract is invalid. And he believes that the forestry rights certificate he owns is also invalid or maybe even forged. So maybe some of the signatures are forged. And um, so because this other villager, Ma Lin Kun, um, used to be part or was part of a rural production team um, that was basically during the people's commune system in the PRC until 48. There was this, these rural production teams that were working together um, on the farms and they used to own this land before or not own but used this land before. And so there's always this, this struggle about this, this land, these land rights. Um, so this is this really complicated story about the, about the land rights. And then the second um, theme that keeps occurring in the documentary um, is the 
the system of rural traditions and these belief systems that still exist in the countryside in China. So uh, we have scenes where uh, Wang, the pr protagonist, visits the temple to light firecrackers and uh, the scene with this old lady who is checking for ghosts and demons and bad feng shui and casting spells in order to restore the family harmony. So that is another storyline. And another theme is centered around the elderly that are being left behind in the countryside, left behind in the villages. They still have to work the fields and um, despite of their frailness and despite of their sickness and uh, how old they are. So there is um, old Mrs. Wan who still works the fields at age 85 and who is almost too, too, walk, uh, too weak to walk. And there is He Jiangming uh, whose children left the village to work, leaving him all alone. Also very weak, can hardly walk, can hardly work the field anymore. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of interesting uh, stories interwoven. And um, this is just my attempt of a summary because I think everybody who watches the film sees something different because it's so rich in, uh, in themes. And uh, yeah, I'd like to maybe uh, first um, ask some questions to everybody, uh, all of the speakers, you can just decide who wants to answer. Um, so how did you get this idea? Like, how did you get, uh, how did, how was this idea born? And um, maybe first, why is it a cooperation between three universities? So you, you write that it's um, cooperation between Chongqing University, Beijing University, and Sichuan University, or, yeah. So maybe uh, Professor Wang would like to answer that first question. Yeah, I think maybe this the question, uh, it's, uh, I am suitable to answer this question because uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they, they uh, cooperation with them. And uh, you know, uh, Chongqing University is my uh, uh, job uh, university. My, uh, I am working at Chongqing University and uh, uh, Beijing University or Peking University. I'm studying um, three years as a postdoctor uh, in uh, the School of Art uh, in Peking University. So, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, Academy of uh, Sichuan Fine Art uh, or Sichuan Fine Art Academy, yeah, uh, the third university, uh, we have a project uh, with them. And uh, so, uh, uh, why uh, in our, uh, in my uh, documentary, choice the uh, three university as our uh, films production uh, university because uh, the, uh, when I uh, work at uh, Chongqing University and uh, I live in and work here and I have a feeling, um, deep feeling and um, to the local culture, the Southwest uh, rural area uh, around the city. So uh, this is the, the main reason. And uh, in Peking University, I receive uh, a deep philosophy or uh, aesthetic veil training, or sometimes maybe, uh, uh, you know, Peking University have, uh, uh, have a very traditional uh, uh, aesthetic uh, is it take, uh, uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, uh, style or some of the special training in the Chinese classical literature and the philosophy. And uh, I just, uh, uh, in three years, and uh, I think I get some very important uh, uh, philosophy or aesthetic view to around uh, looking uh, looking around my world. So in uh, third uh, university, uh, you know, I 
always uh, cooperation in this uh, documentary, uh, cooperation with the young artist. Uh, three of the uh, photographers come from the, uh, uh, the Academy of Sichuan Fine Art Academy. So the picture, uh, I think later you watching the uh, film, uh, you will give you me give you a very deep impression about the images, and uh, this uh, the uh, three uh, artists to uh, take this photo, this images. So I think uh, every university gave me a deep influence, and uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Uh, then, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so the this documentary you filmed um, in a small village that was formerly called Yetshixiang, now Huajia village. Uh, that's quite a bit outside of the city of Chongqing. So how did you meet Mr. Wang Huiyuan and what fascinated you about him? What made you decide to use him as the protagonist? Maybe I think this question, uh, our cooperation, our colleague, uh, Mr. Gao, uh, and uh, can answer this question because uh, from the uh, beginning, uh, he attended to choice the topics of the documentary. Mr. Gao, uh, maybe you <laughs> answer this question and I can complement some content. <laughs>嗯，我们拍摄那个纪录片呢，其实主题就已经先定好了，就要拍乡土的哈，拍乡土的纪录片。然后之前呢，其实我们已经走访了那个呃两个地方了，然后其实王慧媛这个地方是最后一个去的，
uh, this person and this place. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I learned that originally you wanted to name the film Xiao Yao Yo, so mm. basically carefree wandering after the writings by Zhuangzi. So why did you change the name of the documentary to Ye Chi Shan Zi? So literally translated the records or the story of Ye Chi Mountain. Um, how does this relate to your or Wang, Wang Jiao shows Wang uh, Li Xin's fable for the so-called Wei Jin demeanor, <laughs> this um, artistic and intellectual style from the Wei and Jin dynasty. Yeah, so uh, I think this is a good question, very uh, important question, and uh, how, uh, why we change our uh, title of the documentary. Uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, we uh, 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 we make this uh, documentary through four years, and at the start, uh, as as uh, just uh, Mr. Gao said, that place is very uh, beautiful. Uh, just uh, you 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 look the documentary, you you can a lot of the images very uh, poetry and politic po politic right. So, uh, so if you just uh, uh, enter this place, uh, come into this place, the first uh, uh, impression you think is a very, very uh, beautiful village and quiet and comfortable uh, and so on, uh, just blah, blah, like this. Uh, as uh, every uh, traveler go to the country, uh, first you can uh, have this impression, but through the, uh, we follow the character Wang Huiyan uh, for years. I find the poetic uh, uh, images, maybe just uh, the outside, uh, the first <laughs> first level of the village and uh, the reality. When I uh, deep uh, more and more touch the deeply uh, life of the village, I find uh, the poetic images just uh, uh, just uh, uh, maybe just uh, is uh, imagine our imagine or, or our, our our dream and uh, uh, put into the village actually like everywhere the urbanization influence everywhere every place urbanization urbanization uh, can you understand these urbanization. words urbanization uh, yeah, not just in our uh, city's life, in the countryside also have a deeply influence in the uh, influence. So uh, we just now uh, want to try to use the uh, Chinese classical uh, literature's uh, uh, title. Uh, Yao Yao Yo, you know, the carefree of Wandry. You just think this name, this title is very free and very comfortable and very quiet. Uh, we just uh, uh, say uh, Wang Huiyuan, meet Wang Huiyuan. I think he, his life like this, actually, you know, he has a case, yeah, he meet some trouble. Uh, in his uh, ordinary life. So, but uh, uh, a little strangers, he can, he and uh, his family members like uh, the villager in living the, the la living the village. The persons can deal with this trouble has a very uh, relaxed attitude. It's, uh, uh, it's very interesting to <laughs> absorb me. And I think I want to choose a uh, 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 reality's uh, attitude to record their life. So I want uh, from the poetic title to the re reality uh, record title, uh, maybe uh, reflection my change, uh, my, my view for the Valley's life. 
okay. change your yeah. view for their lives, yeah. yeah. Uh, how to understand the villagers' life, how to understand the, the villagers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> did you want to call, talk about the way Jin demeanor, or should we just... Oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot to the second uh, question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, it's very, very uh, important. Wei uh, Jin demeanors, Wei Jin Feng Du. Yeah, uh, you know, Wei Jin Feng Du come from the uh, Dao uh, uh, terms, uh, Daoism terms. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a uh, very important uh, aesthetic terms in cl classic China. Uh, so just now I take I tell you I told you I I my research my view influence in Peking University receive the uh, uh, the aesthetic uh, view maybe the Wei Jin uh, demeanor uh, is one of these uh, view why so uh, the terms is so important because uh, at that. Uh, that times they in electric or in Chinese uh, ancient in in character find lanterns can they help us help them to escape from the social life and can um, find the lanterns uh, uh, semiotics can uh, as a uh, as a way to against the socialization of their life, and I think uh, not uh, all not this idea not uh, uh, through these years through so long times this idea not just uh, uh, influence the uh, intellectual cycle, and uh, in the ordinary persons actually receive this view. Maybe China as a uh, farmer culture or uh, like this. So uh, has uh, persons uh, uh, easy to take a, a, a different uh, way to uh, deal with the natural relationship. So uh, I just uh, uh, choose this uh, uh, aesthetic view. Uh, reflection in our documentary star style. Yeah. Uh, just, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this, um, I will get back to this um, theme of the semiotics of the natural uh, world, like the, the the symbols of mountains and so forth. That that will be a question for Gao Zhibin later. But um, first, um, I I will actually. Um, just ask my question about the English title now because we're already talking about titles and because Professor Bergfelder also just mentioned in the chat, he just wrote me a, a chat message <laughs> that um, uh, whether Mountain of Nothingness, this, this uh, English title, um, so I guess that's a question maybe for Wang Jing, also is influenced by this Taoist um, mm -hmm. um, topic mm -hmm. well uh i think that uh, uh professor uh, wang lixin has already partly answered this mm -hmm. uh question and to um okay to decide upon the uh english translation uh is firstly uh you know we got the chinese name changed from xiao yao you to ye chi shan ji first and uh, then when we are looking for the English title for this film, I, uh, you know, I, we, we thought that we could simply use pinyin, but doesn't, you know, make too much sense to, to international audience. And uh, uh, then, you know, we, we, were, we, were, we were talking about mountain uh, because it's a mountainous area. Uh, the environment, the beautiful environment there, is, uh, so it's a part of the, a part of the theme. The natural theme, and also um, we we tend to how to say nothingness is a very philosophical term, and uh, I, I have to admit that it's it could be interpreted in many ways, 
and uh, we we really uh, you know want to how to say leave leave a uh, leave it open for for audience to inter interpret, mm -hmm. okay? Because you know uh, at first you you was you will you will consider this film you know like the the beginning scene and uh, also the 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 the, the the, the beautiful natural scenery so okay, give us an image of Taoism okay so uh, this character protagonist escape from uh, re reality okay it's like a um, you know doing nothing way so that's one kind of way to 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 interpret the word uh, nothingness and but in between you will see this chaotic uh, you know lawsuit and uh, uh, you know this um, uh, pragmatic and uh, and realistic issues, and which means that he really cannot escape from the reality, and that leaves um, this uh, ending. Uh, it's hard, uh, but it's you know it's somehow he is doomed to achieve. Uh, I couldn't see nothing, but it's probably nothing. Okay, so that you know it's it's really hard for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, so uh, there, there are many ways to interpret. So after the discussion with Professor Wang, only thing I, 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 you know, thought, thought about this topic for, for uh, the, the, the English title for a very long time. And uh, I realized that, you know, uh, at, at, at the beginning, we, we decided that, you know, Mountain of Nothingness is philosophical, it's meaningful, and it's good. And we, for us, we get something from 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 this topic, uh, from this title, and also it leave it, uh, you know, it, uh, it is open for other people to interpret from their perspective. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great title. I really like it. It's. Uh -huh. I, thank you. By the way, I want to yeah. say, yeah. The lessonist uh, in Chinese words is a very special word, as mm -hmm. the uh, Dr. Wang Jin just now said. And mm -hmm. uh, one side, lessonist means empty, like the uh, village, only leaving the old person, uh, leaving mm -hmm. the village. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe very uh, mm -hmm. difficult, a lot of yeah. trouble. Difficult. Uh, and yeah. the other side, uh, lessonist means the uh, many, many impossible uh, mm -hmm. and uh, many rentful needs, uh, failing rentful. You can uh, mm -hmm. add anything in it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we choose this title. And I want uh, not uh, just uh, uh, express uh, some more uh, uh, difficult or like that. Mm -hmm. No, no, uh, not, that's not uh, my main ideal. I want to say maybe uh, in everyone's life we face a lot of trouble, a lot, a lot of change in the uh, lifetime, in the uh, the, the uh, social changes, and maybe sometimes we just uh, we only uh, follow this change, uh, but we can choose our attitude like this village, like Wang Huiyuan. So uh, he yeah. made. Uh, a, a lot of trouble, but you you watching this document, yeah. you will find uh, he and his wife always keep a uh, very happy and high spirits. Yeah, positive, yeah, positive, positive, positive okay. attitude. Yes, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. It's very uh, meaningful in Chinese culture. Uh, yeah. I just, I guess, um, yeah. So that that so, already. Sorry. That okay. To the next question, which is, um, did you have an angle how you wanted to portray or uh, how you wanted to portray um, the elderly in general? Like you just said, you wanted to uh, put a spotlight on maybe their positive attitude, even though they still have to work at an old age, but they're still positive or... Is that something that you're seeing as a general pattern in Chinese elderly in the countryside? Or, yeah. Maybe uh, in some degree, Chinese person, I think uh, I just, uh, uh, by my uh, personal, by my uh, personal uh, um, uh, 
watching and uh, in investigate them, I find uh, in ordinary Chinese have a, a very natural to uh, uh, deal with uh, the surroundings and or environment uh, uh, troubles. Uh, in sometimes, uh, if you look, they choice the root and um, the uh, ritual wells, ritual well, ritual well, right? Yes. Rituals, yeah. The ritual. Rituals, mm -hmm. you find this is relaxed and not uh, very uh, uh, changeable. Uh, I mean, they, uh, they can choose. Uh, I think that's completely different uh, South uh, uh, West culture uh, or Europe countries cultures. Uh, uh, they always to uh, deal with the trouble, choice different uh, ritual ways. Maybe some discourse, maybe use the temple, uh, Buddhism, Buddhism cultures, maybe other uh, 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 goddess belief. So uh, in some degree, you can say uh, not so serious uh, to deal with the God belief, uh, belief. but uh, you know, the environment always uh, a little chain challenging to the, this old man, this old person. So I think in some degree, um, everyone, uh, I meet uh, a lot of the uh, old person in village, the old villager uh, <coughs> uh, tries the um, understand the life, understand the, uh, the trouble, and just uh, I can deal with them, I deal with them. If I couldn't, I think I try my best, it's okay. I just uh, wait in my fantastic, meaning uh, destiny. 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 Uh, destiny. I think that's uh, maybe it's a natural, naturalism. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just, I want, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I understand my meaning. No, like, yeah. So they're trying, they're trying their best to make the best out of the situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Try my best. And I think it's all of that. I can wait for, I can uh, patient to deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd um, like to maybe um, have uh, some questions about the aesthetics. Um, so that would be for Gao Zhibin again, um, some questions about the imagery in the film. Um, so when I saw the movie for the first time, um, it reminded me of this Shan Shui Hua, the, the, the mountain water paintings, the classical paintings. Um, some of those images with the clouds and the mountains and some people, small people walking through the scenery. Um, so was this your intent? Um, like, was that a conscious act to, um, to bring this kind of um, uh, aesthetics into this film? Uh, 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 就是目的啊 嗯, 
呃，但是呢，随着我和王王老师呢，就是王导演呢，我们深入的研究以后呢，觉得还是要强化一下这种山水的意境，在画在我们的影片中的一个比重。呃，第一呢，就是想达到一种以物喻人的一个效果哈、啊，比如说云山、木牛，还有那些飞鸟，还有呃，就是王慧媛带着一个蓑笠在雨中哈、啊，这个都很有山水画的意境。呃。我们想把这个主人公在山上放牛这种，呃，逍遥旷达的精神呢，呃，这种精神写照呢，与他必须面对的一些，比如说世俗上的哈，呃，像打官司啊这些琐事形成一个鲜明的对比。嗯。嗯 okay, that's a lot of information. Um, as a matter of fact, at the beginning, we uh. We uh we were not very clear about what to 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 what to film and what to uh how and how to shoot and what to film and but the first uh, uh but we are very certain that uh, uh it's a beautiful area and to make a rural documentary and you need to um and it's it's very resource for us so uh. Uh, we uh, and also most of the crew members have uh, a fine art uh, background, and um, uh, we are uh, very uh, heavily influenced by this uh, Chinese ancient aesthetic philosophy uh, of using uh, natural symbols uh, to represent human emotions. And uh, many of the uh, uh, along the shooting. Lots of the scenes、uh, simply reminded us of、uh, this、um, poetic imagery in ancient Chinese literature, like、uh, the protagonist standing、uh, in the rain,、um, and、uh, also the the mountain、um, with the cloud、uh, with the cloud at the top, and bring us、uh, lots of poetic、uh, imaginations, and so.、Uh, Along the shooting, and also knowing that uh, uh, this protagonist has this、uh, spirituality against the, the realistic、uh, chaos, so we we are trying to make full use of those、uh, images and、uh, and the symbols、um, to、uh, to trying to make a contrast、uh, between the spiritual world, his spiritual world. And、uh, the、uh, the real world, okay. So this is、uh, this is our thought. Yeah. So you already mentioned the the symbols,、um, the mountains and the rivers and the clouds, the birds.、Um, you.、Uh, so they they are traditional symbols, but maybe you could、um, explain. To us,、um, why are these natural symbols so important and um, so um, yeah? There's basically everywhere in Chinese art. So where does this come from? This pheno phenomenon that it's all natural symbols in Chinese poems, Chinese、um, Chinese paintings. And film, <laughs> 就是就是他说，哎，高老师就是他说的这些，就是山啊、水啊、鸟啊这些，那在文化中国文化当中随处可见啊什么的。你你再你再能够再稍微拓展的给我们说一下。哦，为什么？呃，这可能与中国的传统文化有关吧，因为大家都知道啊，中国是很早就进入到农业社会了。这也造成了中国的文化与土地是紧密联系的。然后，比如说中国人呢，奉行天人合一的这种理念啊，呃，所以在艺术表现上，比如说诗歌、绘画，那古人呢可能就更多的去寄情于山水，来表达自己的一个内心的一种思想，或者是一个呃表达自己的一个，比如说哲学上的一种思考。所以呢，会把呃。所有的想象或者是所有的意境，通过那个物化啊，山水来物化自己的一种形象哈。所以在呃，比如说中国在那个
绘画当中会强调梅兰竹菊啊，就是四君子，这个来象征人的一种品格啊，这也是呃我们中国传统文化当中的一部分。然后呢，其实，在片中我们也是这样强化的，主人公在云山，还有呃，比如说雨山、雪山中漫游，呃、其实也是这样强调他的这种超然物外的一种精神状态或者追求。啊，谢谢，是不是太长了？<笑> Okay. Uh, I'll try to cover. <laughs> okay, it's uh, uh again, it's uh, uh, it's deeply rooted in Chinese culture. Uh, as China has been an agricultural country for very, very thousands of years. Uh, we we've been like uh, Professor Wang mentioned, a farming country, agricultural. Country for a very long time, so uh, Chinese people always have the deepest feeling with the land, and uh, uh, also in 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 Chinese philosophy, we have this uh, 天人合一啊、uh, this uh, the thought of uh, um, of the uh, how to say that nature and a human being are in one. Uh, this philosophy has uh, uh, deeply influenced. The uh, artistic uh, expression in China, you know, poetry, paintings, etc. And so, uh, 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 later uh, in literature and in art, we uh, we always try to uh, use uh, natural symbols to express uh, human emotions and uh, and the thought and even philosophy in China we have this famous saying of uh, famous um, uh, we use this for plants like uh, I forgot the English term for <laughs> oh, uh, okay this is not rose rose r o s e Roses? Oh no, it's not. It's not roses. 不是不是不是玫瑰花，是梅花的。How to say? It's you know the 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 very uh the very scent has strong scent, but it only bloom in winter. Oh yeah. And so so the because this flower is so special, it blooms in very cold winter. It's uh and also bamboo and and those uh you know uh, special uh this. Those type of flowers and plants are favored by Chinese culture and Chinese people because they, they uh, we we thought that they are they they are different. They represent this you know integrity, um, strong character uh, of Chinese people, um, and so that you know it's a it's it's a how does it's a natural uh, tendency for us to combine to integrate this thought aesthetic uh, tradition into making the film. Yeah, it's plum, plum blossom. Oh, plum blossom, yeah, <laughs> plum blossom, yes. <laughs> I want to uh, a little uh, compliment uh, the Mr. Uh, Mr. Gauss uh, uh, mind. Um, because uh, in the uh, very, very uh, ancient times, uh, Chinese, uh, at the Chinese ancient times, the uh, persons, have uh, make uh, establish the tradition has a very close relationship with the land uh, because I think uh, it's many reasons uh, uh, in China's environment the surrounding um, is a uh, uh, land uh, countries or uh, in inner land countries so uh, in ancient uh, Chinese uh, person uh, always uh, uh, rely uh, rely on the uh, uh, agriculture or farming uh, culture life to support their life. Uh, so uh, this tradition uh, influence uh, every uh, generation uh, Chinese people. So uh, from the ancient to modern society. So uh, we can uh, easily have a lovely with the uh, natural uh, environment. Uh, in, other, uh, in other way, uh, 
in the uh, pro uh, Qin dynasty, pro Qin dynasty, you know, uh, very uh, ancient period, and our classical literature like the Book of Chang, Yi Jing, the Book of Songs, Zi Jing, and uh, the analytic of the Kong Fu Zi, Lun Yu, they three uh, very important classical literature, Chinese classical literature, use so many uh, natural symbol, like you see cloud, river, bird, and the grass to express their feeling, will, and the ideas about the world. So I think uh, so Chinese persons easy to uh, keep a very lovely relationship with this uh, symbol. I just uh, look around in our life like this. Yeah. Um, I think this, in this, uh, in your movie, um, in your film, Mountain of Nothingness, um, these shots where uh, Wang Huiyuan walks through the countryside and the walks through the clouds, these beautiful images, they are uh, a, like a dream in this movie, in this film. And I think Gao Zhibin already mentioned before, actually that was <laughs> in the talk we had before this, but he talked about these different layers in the film. So the realistic layer, the dream layer. And um, I think I just, I just thought of this when, when, when you um, talked about these natural symbols, how important they are in China. I feel uh, a lot of the films that we have in this film festival are set in the countryside, but most of the filmmakers like you live in the city. Uh, so it's almost like you are mirroring this in, um, in a larger dimension. So you're also dreaming yourself into the countryside by doing your films. Maybe, um, I don't know. Um, Maybe I think so. Yeah, sometimes the way both of uh, all of uh, us are uh, uh, dreamer. Uh, Side of Wang Huiyuan, uh, actually, uh, as a, the filmmaker, we have uh, our uh, imagine to our surroundings, to our environment. And uh, mm -hmm. actually, we always, uh, as <laughs> I just uh, uh, express my uh, personal uh, feeling, we want to go to other place to find a different and uh, escape the ordinary life, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, uh, every day, daily, uh, day, day and day is a very, sometimes a little boring. And I, I will wish can find other different uh, place, different lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so as a Chinese person, uh, country, maybe uh, other <laughs> uh, countries, uh, persons, or like, uh, like us, uh, choice the country as a, another place, different place. But uh, sometimes <coughs> just a uh, 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 little uh, escape from our uh, life to another space, mm -hmm. find another space. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes can feel us uh, some uncomfortable feeling to our selves life. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah, like Wang Huiyuan, why he always uh, uh, keep the varied outlook, just uh, uh, express uh, attitude to uh, keep the spatial compared mm -hmm. to, uh, keep, keep, keep his spatial compare the uh, uh, around the villages, different other villages. Yes, he's still. Yeah, like, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, uh, in our documentary films, uh, uh, plus, uh, as I said, uh, many, many villagers uh, want to uh, tell him, give up to uh, or stop to mm-hmm. herd the cattle, mm-hmm. even his wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, ask him, you're so old, so old and have so strong, haven't so strong, so you, you, you will be able to stop this uh, work. But uh, they very, very stubborn to keep this life. Why? Because she likes this different cycle from the uh, daily life. And sometimes uh, the natural, very natural choice keep, uh, become our uh, first choice to other space. I just want to say this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, maybe some, you can understand, dear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so when you're talking um, about the natural so much, um, I guess uh, we have to talk about the urbanization as well. Um, so maybe this is a question for Wang Jing. Um, so uh, Mountain of Nothingness explores some of the cultural issues that are brought, uh, brought forth by urbanization in China. So could you maybe Give us some examples from the film. I, yeah, uh, the the dream that uh, Mr. Wang Huiyuan um, planned for 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 his uh, senior uh, peers from the village mm-hmm. is uh, um, it's simply because uh, he want to find a way to solve the problem of uh, uh, you know uh, of caring for the old people um, who. Who are uh, who are left alone in the village because their uh, their children um, or maybe and their grandchildren went to the cities to work or maybe go to school. Uh, this is uh, this is actually uh, quite true in many uh, Chinese places. Um, we had this because it is a it's a growing country and it grows very fast. And so, on one hand, you see there are more people working in the city and uh, um, also uh, uh, everything, uh, everybody is, 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 is looking for the opportunities. But uh, recently, in the last few years, we can see many uh, Chinese f- uh, documentaries and the TV programs are paying more and more attention to uh, the country life. Um, not only artists, uh, also many local governments are uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, calling people's attention to this because we realized that uh, um, in, 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 the, in, the, in the rural area, uh, you rarely see, you're, you, you, you can rarely see many young people and, um, and how to look after those uh, rural senior populations has become very important issue. And secondly, um, is that, you know, uh, while we are making this film, we realized there are uh, very important um, traditional ritual, rituals are being lost. And um, when the young people moved to the cities and uh, senior people are, are too old to even look after themselves and how to keep those traditions is also uh, something I think very severe. And um, Again, you know, uh, we, 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 we already realized that, you know, as a, as a society, um, but, uh, but uh, 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 how to, you know, uh, keep those rituals, traditions, this cultural heritage is, is a very important job. So I think, you know, at least these two uh, questions need to be, uh, to be, um, to be you know, uh, thought about and maybe planned in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I think we now have, um, we just have one, uh, had one hour of interviews now, and um, I think now would be a good time to um, answer the questions um, of the audience. Yes. yes. Unless there's something, one of you three, um, we, because we did not um, talk about all the questions, 
that we thought of before. So if there is anything else you'd like to add before we start with the questions. Mm. Otherwise you can all, you can just um, also, if you think of something else, then just, you can add that later. Yeah. As well. uh, I find these three questions, uh, but uh, the first one, I, I'm, I'm not very clear. Uh, the oh, reason. I think that that question is raised after I explained the English title. So I, uh, yeah, I will just, ex I'll, uh, because the, the um, the audience might not be able to see all the questions. I'm not even sure, but I'll just read them to you, <laughs> so that way everybody will will know what we're talking about. So, um, first question was. Um, uh, uh, audience said, "What is the reason for you to direct this film towards uh, international audience?" Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, can, can I can I uh, explain this first? Because I thought that this question pop up after I explained the English title. Uh, uh, you know, to make it clear, this film is 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 made uh, as a film. It's not for like a particular group of audience. Uh, but uh, when we uh, you know. Uh, you know, we want to make a proper film and we need to have uh, titles. Uh, it's uh, uh, firstly, it's a, it's a, it's a film with uh, dialectic uh, subtitles. So we, we have to make sure that uh, Chinese audience and uh, maybe international audience will understand it. So proper Chinese subtitle and also English subtitles. And uh, uh, we, 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 we welcome all audiences, um, domestic audience, international audience to, to, to watch that. So we do not have a particular uh, plan at first, like, you know, uh, Mr. Gao and, uh, uh, and the director Wang has explained. Uh, it's uh, okay, right along the process of uh, filming and, uh, and the making and editing, we realize the, and the, the theme is becoming clearer and clearer along the process. Yeah, so I think that also kind of relates to the, uh, this, this question by an anonymous uh, person <laughs> who is asking um, this, well, this is in German, so I'm just going to translate. Um, so this law case that, um, that happened and um, the, uh, this talk about politics um, and so forth, was that something that you just encountered spontaneously um, when you filmed, or was that something you planned to, to film beforehand? Yes. And I'd like to ask you a second question. What do you expect as a Chinese audience? Oh, he asked the third question, Wang Lishi. He asked the third question. The third question. The third question, I just translated it. 对，要不先回答第三个问题吧。因为这个，呃、uh, ，I think this this is a spontaneous in, encountering. Um, be I w while we are uh talking and interviewing uh Mr. Wang Huiyan, we 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 and also you know we we uh introduced by other villagers, we understand that he's struggling with this. So we didn't plan <laughs> everything. It's a documentary, okay. Um, and so we're trying to be. Uh, as realistic as possible. Yeah, yeah. by the way, as you know, this plot a little complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we just uh, look the uh, images very beautiful, but uh, uh, you, as you summarize, summarize this content, mm -hmm. there, uh, there have three lines to uh, follow these stories. Why mm -hmm. is they uh, how to, the old old person how mm -hmm. to deal with their daily life difficult. So another uh, is about the land uh, right, mm -hmm. you know. Like, yeah, yeah. And um, a little surprise, I find you uh, read you read a a a a little plot very very uh, cute, very uh, smart, uh, you know. Uh, uh, a plot uh, at the almost end of the documentary, Wang Huiyuan meets a town's official in the street and mm -hmm. uh, has dialogue. Uh, the, the official 
asking mm-hmm. her uh, uh, go to work and uh, he just uh, uh, escaped and uh, in, uh, invited to tell him the truth, the uh, reality, uh, his purpose. Yeah. So uh, I think you are you 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 are teaching this uh, the plot is very sharp. Yeah. And uh, I I want to ask the second question. If I want to say. Um, we want to keep the ob- objective because if we, if we follow the uh, different uh, background person like the chief of the village, the Wang Huiyuan and the Ma Lingkun, we just uh, uh, talk about with them. I find everyone has the reasonable to choose this attitude. Uh, in cloud, uh, Wang Huiyuan, maybe sometimes not uh, as him tell us so reasonable. Mm-hmm. Some degree, maybe they contract a little <laughs> uh, problem, a little illegal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe Ma Lin Kun said some degree truth, but uh, the dilemma. Why the situation changed to dilemma? In sometimes I feel a little humor, maybe black humor. Yeah. <clears throat> so we want our uh, group discussing this. We want to keep the objective to mm-hmm. deal with the, the stories. Just uh, mm-hmm. follow them. In some plot, we in the. In the document, you can see our photographers, our uh, uh, the staff in the in the uh, images. You can see them, the makers, mm-hmm. or, or uh, in some images, the makers themselves in his uh, in the slides. So uh, I think uh, maybe this is the reality of life. We. We want to have a dream, but the dream <laughs> always changes. And uh, I want to ask, uh, answer the second question. I think this is an interesting question. I want to answer this question. What do you expect a Chinese audience to be interested in my, fam- my film most? I guess, in cloud myself. I think the, the film most interesting is the dialogue, the discourse, the language, very interesting. And uh, every word just uh, natural by themselves said, I find it so interesting and so lively. Uh, many, many metaphor, metaphor, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Metaphors. Metaphor, uh, metaphor come from the, the natural life. It's very interesting. So, uh, to the end, I want to say, uh, as others, we always, we have uh, some uh, good feeling to look the village, actually. Maybe village not necessarily lead the person come from the uh, city. We, uh, as us, come from the uh, city, lead lead the uh, village or country to help us to the organization's uh, uh, thickness, maybe. So uh, if you're interested, I want to uh, 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 suggest uh, uh, read our po- uh, my poem at the end of the document. I post my uh, poem right by myself. I think this poem very, very uh, truly expressed my feeling about uh, uh, my stories, my ideals, and my change in the film make parents. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I think you already 
by this uh, by answering this question, you already answered um, the second part of this um, anonymous person's um, question, which was um, what happened after you had all this raw material, after you had done all this filming, how did you decide what to keep, especially when it comes to these, um, these plots about the land rights and the politics and this, these discussions and so forth. Um, yeah. I mean, you already mentioned there are there are you you kind of try to keep these keep to these three plots about the elderly left behind, and then also about the land rights and about the traditions in this village. Um, and so, I guess this probably also already answers this. And also, you wanted to um, still be as realistic as possible to really portray, yeah, as objectively as possible. Or am I wrong? Like, please correct me. <laughs> or how would you answer um, this question? Like, how did you decide how to cut uh, all this raw material and what to focus on? Uh, I, 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 can I add something here from my understanding that uh, uh, also, I think Professor Wang uh, has just explained what what she thought of uh, those, you know, conflicts between or among those <laughs> multi sites of the villagers. And uh, uh, there's there there is no like a very clear line between uh, the right and wrong. And I I, I personally think um, that it is because of this uh, how to say this this quality or characteristic of uh, of the rural population in China because I, I still have many relatives and and, uh, and uh, my grandparents and you know uncles I have many relatives uh, are they are still uh, living in the rural area in China in northern part of China and uh, I I think that you know for for us as Chinese uh, citizens it's a uh, um, it's, it's it's much so much easier because it's uh, this, there is this cultural uh, differences and for us. Um, uh, it's much easier to understand uh, the uh, how these rural uh, arguments and uh, conflicts came along. Sometimes it's hard to say whom to blame or who is absolutely illegal or a bad guy. They are simply looking at what's on their plate and <laughs> what is in yeah, what they uh, how to say there's uh, they're 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 looking at this conflicts of. Uh, probably, okay, uh, uh, their interest or maybe their plans. So I, I think uh, uh, Professor Wang is trying to explain that uh, um, we're now trying to say that who is the bad guy and we are trying to, to portray the, the matter uh, as, as it is. Mm -hmm. So yeah. stay objective. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Are you found the uh, villagers' life, like Wang Huiyuan, is truly portrayed life. I think mm. compare my, yeah, yeah. So I think we can only have one last question. Um, yes, that the, would be the question: yeah. Why is Wang Huiyuan's hair so long, and why? <laughs> and what is, is does it have some kind of symbolic meaning that his hair is so long? Uh, Mr. Gao, maybe you can answer this question. Uh, Gao 老师, 你, 你回答一下吧, 为什么王慧元的头发这么长, 他也不会剪呢? 啊, 呃, 这个我觉得还是大家去观看影片来解密吧, 呃, 他在里面已经交代了哈, 但是他那个其实是特别吸引我们的一个形象嘛, 主要是, 呃, 在农村来说，这样的一个一个形象还是很怪异的啊。呃，因为在影片里也说到了，就是刚见到他的时候，以为他是一个精神病人。然后慢慢发现，原来他还是非常有学识的一个人啊。所以我们在我我也想回答一下
。然后呢，第第二点呢，可能是大家就现实当中的乡村，它也有各种琐事、各种纠纷，比如说王慧媛和马林坤之间的那个土地纠纷。啊，第三个呢，就是王慧媛为代表的，她不习惯于城市的生活。啊，他要逃离那个城市，比如说他去打官司的时候是被迫下山的，他是不是主动去的，也相当于我们现代人的一种对现代生活的一种逃离。而且呢，回到我们整个片子的初衷，比如说中国是一个高速发展的一个社会，嗯，那是不是有点有点快了啊？中国是一个高速发展，呃，高速发展的社会呢，其实，在很大程度上，比如说我们刷社交媒体啊，或者什么的。很少有农村的报道，所以呢，观众来说呢，其实对农村还是好奇的，对乡土还是好奇的，他也是充满好奇的。而且中国高速发展以后呢，其实，呃，乡村在某种程度上是被遮蔽掉，啊，然后近代近一段时间呢，为什么我和王立新导演会关注到农村这个问题呢？其实，呃，我们国家也在提倡这个哈，比如说脱贫致富，或者是振兴乡村呐、啊，或者振兴乡村文化呀、啊。其实从这个角度看呢，其实还是很容易去吸引观众的啊，吸引中国去观看的。还有一点呢，就是老人口老龄化的问题啊，其实是一个全呃全世界的一个难题哈。尤其在中国呢，是叫我们叫未老先衰，他没有进入到发达社会，然后就出现了大量的老年人啊。其尤其是我们在纪录片里看到哈，中国的农村呢，其实很少有年轻人在了。大部分都是老年人，其实我们也在通过影片来探讨啊，但是比较隐晦的去探讨，呃，老年人老了以后，尤其是农村人老了以后，他的生活是怎样，他怎么样获得一个社会的保障嘛，也是在这样也探讨。嗯 ，OK， 呃、uh, ，OK for the long hair， 呃、uh, ，of Mr. Wang， it's not a special symbol， it's a， it's a， it has a。Uh, re- has several reasons, a personal reason. You know, his 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 personal preferences, and also his、uh, sickness of having headache. It, uh, uh, we recommend you to look at the film、uh, carefully again, and you will find、uh, why he kept、uh, the, his hair for so many years.、Um, and uh, uh, pro- uh, uh, Professor Gao Wang also want to add some information to the question of. Uh, uh, Of、uh, what is the value of this film to、uh, both international audience and the Chinese audience?、Uh, because for him, that you know, this film is、uh, has these three layers of meanings.、Uh, first of all, is uh, Chinese uh, this complicated、uh, emotional complex with land,、um, and also you know the realistic, uh, uh, the pragmatic and the realistic facts that.、Uh, We that they、uh, as the villagers as the rural population they have to deal with, but but uh, uh, also it it represents a kind of uh, uh, life that you can、uh, temporarily escape from the from the city.、Um, this is also、um, you know、uh, bring us back to the the original、uh, plan or the original、uh, thought of making this film、uh, because we. Uh, we 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 have this project. We want to make a rural documentary because we realize that in the fast developing、uh, period that China has been, you know, experiencing right now,、um, because it's a gr- country that is growing growing so fast from an agricultural、uh, country to an industrialized uh, uh, country, commercialized country, um, and、uh, you will you found that there. Are, Very few news and stories, uh, and uh, uh, you know, artistic work made or based on、uh, on, on 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 the on the rural land, and so we realize that it's、um, important and it's obligation for us as as artists, and、uh, also,、uh, you know, the project is is partly sponsored by.、Uh, By the university and uh, uh, under uh, the 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 the, the、uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, how to say、um, kind of uh, uh, re uh, uh, how to say uh, uh, ex- express and you know to 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 main to keep and to、uh, 
to tell people about the rural stories and uh, uh, rural lives. Um, and, and that is, you know, uh, the original plan of uh, shoot and film this uh, documentary. Okay. And uh, also, uh, I think, you know, part of, uh, part of the, uh, uh, the purpose of making this film and also introducing this character, choosing this character, Mr. Wang, who has this dream of building a, a care home, uh, is that we uh, are uh, already paying attention to the, 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 the problem of uh, uh, the problem bro brought along by urbanization. People are uh, how to look how to look after the senior uh, population in rural area when their uh, children are not no longer there. And this problem is particularly important in China because China is a, a country, like I said, of a, of a young um, but developing very fast. And so that you will see that there, the construction, the the, how to say the reference uh, uh, okay the, the construction I mean the you know the uh, facilities in rural areas is not maybe not very developed as compared to uh, to developed countries and uh, so that we we, we, we uh, th this problem is be, is uh, particularly important to us and so that you know choosing this character and this theme is also I think, um, very important uh, obligation for us as um, scholars and artists. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I think um, now we answered all the questions and um, I think it was really interesting. Um, thank you so much for um, for being here and for staying up really late for us today in China. <laughs> and um, we still have the festival on until Wednesday. So um, you still have time to watch almost all of the movies in our program. And of course, especially who hasn't watched it yet, please watch Mountain of Nothingness. <laughs> and um, yeah, have a good night and thank you so much.